In 2012, in December, I purchased an iPad. It was an iPad mini, a black one, and it worked well. Until around, I believe, 2015, 2016, there was this upgrade in the hardware of the iPad and all the operation systems, or best said, the updates of the iOS operating system that came after that year were only compatible with the new hardware in the iPads. So that iPad mini from 2012, I cannot use it for most of the applications that you can download in the App Store. Why? Because the new apps, which are updated to the latest version of the iOS operating system, they are compatible with the new generation of iPads and iPods and iPhones. So, because the former generation of iPads, iPods and iPhones lack a hardware that the new, for, the new generation has, you cannot use the most updated apps on those old devices. Those devices are considered old because their time has passed. So, that iPad mini, I had to discard it because it wasn't practical for me to keep using a device that's not compatible with its own newest version of its operation system. Because the iPad mini, it runs on the iOS operating system, but the newest versions of, the oper of that operating system are not compatible with the same iPad. Now, why am I using this example? Because I'm using this as a parable, as you know, as I often do. When you walk by faith, you will go through updates of yourself. You will advance, you will grow. You will learn new things. You'll develop new skills. And listen to what, what I'm saying here. Not everyone is compatible with the updated version of you. You are still you, but you have updated a lot since you've been walking by faith. And not everyone is compatible with the newest update of you. Let me give an example. Let's say you had some friends that you hung around. They're not evil people. They're not into sexual looseness partying and drinking a lot and all of that. No, they're just decent people that go to their job. They don't bother anyone else and they seek how to contribute to the community. I'm not saying that people that go to parties cannot be decent, but you get what I'm saying. They're not those party hardy figures. So you hung around them. They were not a negative influence in themselves, but now you walk by faith. Now you see options. Now you decree and declare. So now, you're able to influence circumstances from a distance far better than you could when you were unsafe. Those people, those friends, don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have the cover that comes from walking by faith. So whenever there's danger, they need to get out of there or else something bad happens to them. But you, because you walk by faith, danger flees from you. And because of that, you can visit places others can't. Those friends of yours, when people don't like them, they need, to, they need to get out of there because if they keep coming to a place where people don't like them, it may escalate. They may encounter harm. But you, when people can't stand you, it backfires on them and they'll be the ones fleeing from you. Some people even, even moved away from their own place because their negative will against you backfired on them. So you have far more options than they do. Now, this updated version of you in which danger flees from you instead of the other way around, they can't handle it. Because they can't understand it, they can't process it. They can't understand how people can't stand you, yet people go against their own will and they are kind to you and they work in your favor, often at those people's own expense. They don't, they don't understand how that's possible. They don't understand how you have the power to shut people's negative wills down. They 
are very careful how they treat people and what they say because you know once people develop dislike towards them things may go wrong but with you because none of that harms you you can be fully yourself you can express yourself fully they can't so those people are stuck in toxic restrictions there's always an or else if you don't comply with expectations of society you you use society as a tool but society doesn't use you so you operate in natural autonomy or in freedom they operate in liberty in the permission that society grants onto them so you do the math they are stuck in a fear construct and you are delivered from the spirit of fear instead of fear you have power love and a sound mind so can those people run their affairs with you involved they can't it's too much for them they can't handle it why can't they handle it it's because when you are around danger flees away but they don't have that supernatural cover so the danger that flees from you may be attached to them when you're not around so being around you becomes risky for them they can't have you involved with them because they can't handle the newest version of you and that is something you need to understand just like the older generations of ipads cannot handle the news operating system of apple even though it's from the same company even though the older generation of, of the ipads is designed to run on the ios system because the previous generation of ipads lack an additional hardware that the newest generation has the newest version of the ios cannot function on the previous generation of ipads in the same way you have people that cannot process your presence in their lives they don't really have life to begin with they just have routines patterns and cycles but just let's just call it their lives they can't process you being part of their life why because they don't have this colorful mentality in which they look at the bigger picture they don't have this constructive thinking they're stuck in this black and white pattern mentally they're stuck in seeking relief so you that come you that come along with all these options all these possibilities and this courage and confidence in the future they can't process it so to be around such people will be very awkward it'll be awkward for them because eventually they'll notice that they are lacking something and this is something they don't want to face about themselves but even if that doesn't really bother them you being around them implies that you need to downgrade how you operate so they are at ease with you so it will be at your expense so just understand not everyone can handle the latest version of you so that's why when the holy spirit sees that you're advancing in your walk by faith he will begin to chase people away from you the holy spirit will put a blockade between you and certain people and once the spirit plays a blockade they cannot be involved with you anymore neither can you be involved with them why because the holy spirit sees they cannot process the latest version of you another example let's say you had someone that used to be a scam artist committing fraud robbing people and now he's a high school teacher often the parents of the pupils because he's a high school teacher right so he has pupils in his, in his classes often the parents of those pupils would say things like okay how come this ex-convict is teaching my child okay he's an ex-convict but he's not a convict anymore and he has changed he has updated he's married now he's contributing to the community but people cannot handle that he managed to be updated he didn't update himself he just looked for solutions and he received solutions 
But if they are, if they need to admit that this man, who used to be a convict, scam artist, robber, if they need to admit that he upgraded into a far better version than what they than what they used to be, then they need to admit he didn't do it on his own. Because they will admit that people like them are resisting his progress. So then they need to admit there is some power behind him. And then they need to acknowledge Christ. Then they need to acknowledge that Christ is bigger than them. And then they realize, oh, that Christ is bigger than me can also do with me because I hindered the process of others, the progress of others. They don't want to go there. So even in the world, when you're dealing with unbelievers, unbelievers tend to resist the update of other unbelievers. Someone can be a pagan and though to paranormal aid, they, they kind of update it. It's not an actual spiritual update because they're still lost, but their, their circumstances updated. And still, people around them will see them through the circumstances they were in in the past. Why? Because those people can process what they have become. When someone has decided that you are nothing so that they feel like something, that means their self-esteem is based on you being nothing. The moment your circumstances change, and they can't use those circumstances as a reference point to declare that you're nothing anymore, now their whole self-esteem collapses. And this is something they don't want to face because when they face this, they will face mental health issues and they may even become self-destructive and suicidal. That's how deep it goes. When people have decided that they are all right, that they are okay because they're not as worse off as you, watch out when things become better for you because those people will experience a lot of psychological stress because now their self-esteem has collapsed and once this happens they will come for revenge they will blame you for the fact they've built their self-esteem at your expense and now that you are free from their collective witchcraft and they're now facing the consequences they will blame you for that never will they face themselves for what they've done but they'll come after you and the spirit of envy will take a hold on them you have people out there that died at the hands of people that were driven by the spirit of envy and the only reason the spirit of envy got a hold on them was because they built their self-esteem based on someone else's misery and that's very common in the world why do you think that in mainstream media, they often broadcast bad news? Because when they keep exposing you to bad news, you will feel comfortable that you are not involved in those bad circumstances. That's why, especially in the West, they do this, they keep talking about poverty and they show faces of African children, black children they show you when they talk about poverty. And they keep showing you in far first places in Africa. Why? That is so that you will feel good about yourself being part of a society where you're drained and exploited. Because you feel better than those in Africa, you don't know this, you exploit yourself. So now your self-esteem becomes centered around you not being like those Africans. So your self-esteem is based on the misery of someone else. The moment that misery is challenged, your self-esteem collapses. And if you have relationships where it's marriage, where it's a marriage or friendships or whatever relationship you have on a personal level will also collapse because those relationships are an extension of your self-esteem. All human relationships you're involved in will reflect how you reveal about how you will reveal how you think about yourself, how you feel about yourself also. I'm not saying that, that if you were involved with someone and other individual is toxic, that that shows that you have issues too because you were involved with someone is toxic. If they were toxic and you were not, that means they were toxic. It just showed that you didn't realize the red flags. Not that you're dumb, just didn't realize it. That's a, it that is what it shows about you, but not that you were toxic. So understand what I said. The relationships you're involved in on the long term, let me add that to it, to, it, to, it, to it, on the long term, those relationships will reveal how you think and feel about yourself. And like attracts like. People tend to look 
out for other people or they tend to look for others that are similar to them. So, if your self-esteem is based on someone else's misery, that means that the people you are involved in are also thinking in a similar way. That means that the moment the misery of those upon whom your self-esteem is built changes into happiness or they're delivered, that means that now you're the one in trouble. That is why you need to be alert. I don't say careful to frighten you, I say alert. You need to be alert what you share with people that don't serve Christ. There are even people, there are even believers who are stuck in the deliverance process that you need to look, that you need to pay attention to what you tell them. This is why a lot of people are not happy for you when things go well with you. Because when things go well with you and they rejoice in it, they realize it's not about them. But because they have this toxic self-focus, it has to be about them. And when they realize that you are having a good time, that's, that's not directly related to them, and that, they, and that they can't have a control over your good time, they become upset. There are people who will simply stop talking to you on the spot, ignore you for life, because you're not that miserable individual they taught you to be. The only reason they remained in contact with you was to get a narcissistic supply by the alleged misery they perceived you to be in. The moment it becomes clear that misery never existed, their, their self-esteem collapses. Their social relationships will collapse. Now they will go through a hard time because they, they've built their self-esteem based on a misery that they thought you were in. So, always look at the bigger picture. Always. This is it for now. Keep agreeing with Christ and be at peace.